so hot out, right? I know. The climate has changed so much lately. I know. The flowers are blooming! The flowers are blooming! Who are you? What What are you guys doing? You don't have your head headgear? Just because the climate changed doesn't mean whatever you're talking about. What do you mean? The solar eclipse is right there. There's it's, no solar eclipse in the sky. You it's see all just these the white climate puddles? change. I know it's a little warm, but there's no solar eclipse. You see all these white puddles? It's the melting polar bears. How do polar polar bears melt? Well, cause the solar eclipse is right there. I'm looking at the sun. Am I blind yet? Uh, maybe. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I, but the solar eclipse is right there. You have your glasses off. You can see. You're staring at the sun. Oh. It's just the climate change. Well, here's a story about the climate change by Ella. The flowers are still blooming! Over the years, climate change continuously becomes a bigger issue. Climate change is a long-term change in the average weather patterns that have come to define Earth's local, regional, and global climates. As a result of climate change, many glaciers around the Arctic Circle and nearby icy areas have been melting by 750 billion tons a year. Many scientists believe that by the time 21,000 comes along, more than a third of Earth's remaining ice, glaciers, and snow will melt away almost completely. The issue with this is that it's causing many Arctic animals to have a loss of habitat, cause droughts, make severely hot weather conditions, worsens air quality, and climate change also causes health problems like heat stroke and the bad air quality can give people serious asthma or respiratory issues, and it even causes cardiovascular health effects, which are conditions that affect your heart and blood vessels. All these elements happen to many humans and animals when it comes to climate change, and with our rising sea levels and the problems we have already been facing with the different weather problems, it's just feeding to these issues that all connect with climate change. And many scientists believe that if we don't act quickly by the year 3000, climate change will be almost impossible to reverse. For The Rocker Report, I'm Ella. What are you guys doing out there? We're getting crushed. We're trying our hardest, coach. We'll try your best then. They're like six feet tall, coach. Get taller. It's not that easy. But all you have to do is power through this, okay? But all we need is two base Fall goals, okay? This is a Reese basketball, sir. Yeah. Are you questioning my basketball experience? I've been in the basketball in industry for 55 years, which is my entire lifetime, okay? Now, all you need is this golf putter, okay? So we can win this game, okay? Okay. Basketball on three. One, One two, two, three, basketball! Ball. Huh? Just get back in the game. This is Reese basketball by Kelsey Luke. I said use the putter! Oh, my bad. This January at Reese, ready were excited for our new basketball team. The basketball team's practice is right after school hours and ends at five o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tryouts had 60 applicants attempting to gain one of the 32 spots. Among the three basketball teams, there is one team for girls and two teams for boys. The girls' teams are coached by Mr. Macy, Ms. Bradshaw, and Ms. Leanne, and the boys' teams are coached by Coach D and Coach Abe. On every Saturday, the basketball teams have games in Fisis Middle School. Each team won a placing in the middle school and elementary school tournament. Coach D's team won first place, and Coach Abe's team won third place. The girls' teams won second place, and all of the teams worked super hard during the last basketball season. Here is Miss Leanne who describes the amount of progress the players made. They tried really, really hard during practice and we knew that we had some work that needed to be done. But through the progress of all of the practice and the communication with the girls by the last game, they were a completely different team. They, were, they really grew together. It was amazing. For The Rocker Report, I'm Kelsey. Hey Gia. Hey Scarlett. Have you heard about CAR? No, what's CAR? Oh, CAR? I'll tell you something about a CAR. Um, first of all, we did not talk about that type of CAR. Leave. You said something about a CAR though. Anyways, I don't know who that is, but continue talking. 
Car is where you clean up during your recess. Oh, well, I think I want to join car now. Yeah, it might be fun. Okay, I'll sell you a 1984 Hugo for about five grand. We don't want no car. Get out of here, creep. Anyways, um, continue talking. Cars where you clean oh, up. Sorry to interrupt you. It's but okay. What time do you normally go? You go during your recess. Wow, I think I might tell my friends about car. It could be. Okay, a okay. I'll sell you this view for about two dollars and a chicken sandwich. Not that type of car. And what is that? It's a 1984 Hugo. You said something about a car. Not that type of car. This is a story about car written by Jolene. Have you ever heard of CAR? CAR stands for Cleaning at Recess. CAR was created by a student at Reese named Owen Stringfield in 2022 when he was in third grade. It is a program that gives students a chance to clear Reese's school grounds of trash and waste. CAR maintains a school environment that promotes cleanliness. In CAR, a large group of kids volunteer and get together to pick up garbage on the school field and jungle gyms. Students join in on this program during their recess and get rewarded with a tasty treat at the end. All kids attending Reese are encouraged to partake in CAR to make the school clean. Students of all ages and grades are allowed to participate in these janitorial teams. Here is Owen Stringfield, the creator of this beneficial program, to help explain why he decided to invent CAR. I made CAR because I noticed the school was awfully dirty. And I really just wanted to help clean up and help the world. For the Rocket Report, I'm Jelaine. I can't wait to go to middle school. I can't wait to make new friends. Shark mugs, shark mugs, get one for $97.96. Um, do you know where the office is? Oh yeah, I know where that is. You go straight, no, no left. Okay, going straight now, left, right, and then uh, shark mugs? We asked where the office is. We don't oh, yeah. want any of your shark mugs. Oh yeah, I know where that is. You go, um... How old are you? I'm, uh... Uh... Four years old. Um, how long have you been here? Oh yeah, I know I've been... One! Yeah. Okay, do you know where any of the classes are? Oh yeah, I know... Are you sleeping? Uh, uh, no. Hmm. Um, okay, well, I guess we'll just figure this all by ourselves. Okay. Shark mugs, shark mugs, you get one for 68 cents. That was weird. Oh my gosh, what's he doing? I know, right? Ew. Ugh. Ew. Anyways, this is a story about the Tarkanian field trip by Kyle. <gasps> shark mugs, shark mugs. This past spring, fifth grade students took the annual field trip to Tarkinian Middle School. The field trip contained a tour around the school and fifth graders got to choose their electives for future classes in sixth grade. When they arrived at Tarkinian, fifth grade was immediately greeted by the cheerleaders and student council. Elementary students were welcomed in the school gymnasium by Tarkinian principal, counselors, teachers, and students. Each of the elective classes were introduced such as Palm Squad, Orchestra, Band, and Honor Choir. Then each group performed for the fifth grade students to show the, what their classes are about and what they can do. The performances were exciting, fun, and were filled with large amounts of energy. Then student council guided fifth graders to important stops like the cafeteria and the student success office. After the tour, it was time for fifth graders to choose their electives in the computer lab. The Tarkinian counselors and members of the student council helped fifth graders choose their electives for sixth grade. They also helped answer questions and provide information about the electives and school procedures. For the Rocket Report, I'm Kyle. Well, welcome everybody. 
My name is Riley Hafen, and today I have a special guest. His name is Seth Berwin. Welcome to the show, Seth Berwin. How are you today? Hello, Riley. How you doing today, Riley? How's it going? Okay, well, I have some questions for you. Sure, sure. So, I see you brought somebody here with you today. Oh, Riley, you see that? I brought my buddy here today. His name's Leo! Leo the Lion. Do you know how do you say lion in scientific? What is it? It's Panthorus Leonoris. Panthorus Leonoris, yes. But he's an African lion from the continent Africa. Well, I have some questions for sure. you. Sure. So, do you know how long they can live? Oh, righty. I tell you what. African lions live to be about 14, 15 years old. Like a teenager. Mm -hmm. But they actually clean up their rooms. <laughs> see, the female lions, you know this? See, Leo, he's a boy lion. He's a, you can see by the mane. You see the big, pretty, the brown hair? It's called his mane. Now, the boys, they can get to be about 400 pounds. And the females, they get to be about 200, just a little smaller. They hunt in prides. It's a group of lions. And you know what the funny thing is? What is it? It's always almost all girls. The girls are the leaders. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's house with their mama. <laughs> so, where did you find Leo? Leo? I found Leo at a reserve. He was an orphan. Some idiot took him home and had him in his pocket. Well, that's a big pocket if it can fit Leo. <laughs> yeah, big idiot too. Well, thanks for coming, Seth Berwin. Well, thank you for having me, Riley. I appreciate your time and having me here. Oh, oh, Riley, one more thing. Listen, people forget that lions and tigers are wild animals. I don't care how cute Leo is, he's a wild animal. Don't people can't forget that. So you must respect them. You must have respect, but also make sure that they have power, but you have to respect them. Yes. I don't care how cute they are. Because sometimes you're like, oh, look how cute the little lion is. He's so cute. Right? And then you're just like, oh, I don't Thanks for watching. Oh. I hope this guy oh. learned his lesson. Oh, man, we're alive. Oh, and oh. by the way, here's a story about the lion habitat oh, by yeah. Gia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Recently, the kindergarten students at Reese Elementary went to the lion habitat in southern Las Vegas. The lion habitat is located minutes away from the strip, but were previously located and kept in the MGM exhibit. The MGM exhibit closed in 2012, so the Lion Exhibit Ranch talked with the general public to continue to connect and be inspired to conserve and increase wild populations. As a result, the lion habitat became home to rescues, pet surrenders, or animals that otherwise need a comfortable, safe place to live out their lives. With the help of the general public, the Lion Exhibit was able to remain open and protect and rescue more wildlife. Their hope is to continue to inspire everyone to care for wildlife. Kindergarten students got to feed giraffes and the lions raw meat and other nutrients that they eat. Here are some kindergarten students and teachers explaining their experience and perspective about the lion habitat. I really enjoyed the lion when it roared. It was super loud. It was just booming throughout the entire park. I didn't realize how loud they could sound. My favorite part about the lion habitat was seen the lions and um the, the giraffe's neck was actually really long um, there was also a giraffe there i forgot the giraffe's name but he was very cute for the rocket report i'm g williams show 701 outro take one Thank you for watching the Rocket Report. Make sure you like, click subscribe, and turn on that 
bell icon. Bye.